even when we started iSpot, it was all over the media. TV is dead. TV is dead. Like, so one would say, well, why are you starting a company in TV? TV is dead. But you have to obsessively think through that. And it's like, what does it mean TV is dead? Are people going to go to their wall and rip off this device off of their wall? No, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe anyone's going to do that. Welcome to Founded and Funded. I'm a drone adventure partner, Len Jordan, here today with Sean Mueller, founder and CEO of iSpot, which measures TV advertising for both conventional cable and streaming, and includes audience size and characteristics, creative effectiveness, and performance, both attribution and outcomes. iSpot works with virtually every top advertiser and has helped manage more than $500 billion in advertising spend across more than 60 trillion advertising impressions. I had the pleasure of hosting Sean on this show back in 2019, where we covered the early days of the company and evolving business ideas. Today, we're picking up with everything they've been up to since then. In this episode, Sean shares how he lands strategic partnerships and acquisitions to enhance the data iSpot can provide, his approach to new opportunities in ad-supported streaming, and how and why it's so different from traditional TV network advertising. He will also discuss the strategy and timing for competing against large incumbents and startups by using deep product differentiation and tight alignment with strategic allies. You won't want to miss this one. With that, here's Sean. I would say of all the things that have happened over the last four years since you and I last spoke, the rise of ad-supported streaming has, I think, taken a lot of people by surprise. I, I actually talked to one of our investors at one of our annual meetings four or five years ago, and, and we were talking about iSpot, and this person's observation was, well, cable's dead, right? It's going to be gone in like a couple of years. That was one observation. And then the other was, no one likes advertising, so why does that matter? And it turns out both are wrong. Uh, I think $83 billion got spent last year in the United States on advertising through a television device of some kind. But the most interesting thing is cable didn't die. $62 billion of that advertising was, was over cable. But 21 billion of that was streaming. So I'd love for you to talk about streaming in general, but also just the surprise that for a lot of people that advertising over streaming is now a really big business and projected to become an even bigger business, despite the fact that some people thought that only subscription would be the way people pay for media. We obsess over streaming. Streaming is the future. I guess the fact that, that advertising grown so much streaming has not surprised us. Like we knew that that was coming. And we've been investing in streaming measurement and technologies for well over five years. In fact, one of the reasons we invested in smart TV data was because we foresaw streaming taking off. And that's what is allowing us to measure both streaming and linear in a consistent manner. But there, there's a couple of key trends that I think that, that, that are important to, to streaming and important to marketers. So first of all, audience viewing and streaming has been big for a long time, right? It's it's just that advertising has, has lagged behind it. And, and quite frankly, it's mostly because of Netflix, where Netflix has been a subscription service and there's so much viewership in Netflix. So viewership has been shifting to streaming in a decisive way for a while now. And in fact, today, it's probably almost 50-50 in terms of just viewership. Now, the ads always follow. <laughs> is one thing everyone should know. It, it might take longer than some people think, but but the ads always follow. And that's simply what we're seeing now. We're seeing all of the subscription services, including Netflix, now going to AVOD or, or advertising video on demand. They're all bringing advertising in a bigger way. And, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, quite frankly, consumers have just been conditioned to advertising on TV. Like the Advertising on a television set is just part of the experience. It's, there's really not that much disdain from it. So now advertising has been growing rapidly on streaming. I would say it's more like 70% linear uh, or terrestrial cable and broadcast is, is really how we should refer to it. And 30% streaming. Now that trend is going to continue. What's really going to tip it is sports. Like one thing everyone should know is like sports drives like a massive chunk of advertising dollars on television. So what happens 
with sports is really what's going to dictate. And, and this is really the dynamic to watch right now. Sports is still largely controlled today by broadcast and cable, by the traditional media companies, but that's starting to change. You've seen Amazon Thursday Night Football is now, so Thursday Night Football is now squarely on streaming. It's a great experience. It's something that is going to continue to trend towards uh, streaming. And one of the reasons is the companies that control streaming, the Amazons of the world, the Googles of the world, the Netflix of the world, just simply have more capital than the traditional media companies. So you're going to start seeing more and more of the streaming first companies investing in sports. And it's really sports that's going to be the tipping point of when the advertising dollars shift to be streaming led. The biggest challenge for marketers today is how to shift their dollars across traditional broadcast and cable and streaming and social, right? Like how much to invest in TikTok video, how much to invest in YouTube and things like Mr. Beast and, and, other, and, and other content distribution on social video. So that is the number one challenge for marketers today. And that's why we're seeing so much success in our business and so much growth in our business and helping marketers understand how to intelligently shift those dollars, validate, verify, and tie it all to outcomes. That's the bottom line. That's the biggest challenge today. Well, one of the things I perceive too, and maybe it's because I've got four kids who generally do a lot more streaming than watching old-fashioned linear cable television like their dad, but it is one, the audience could be different. I'm curious how that affects advertisers. I, I don't just think of streaming as a different way of delivering the exact same content. I mean, the nature of the audience seems to be different, generally younger. And then second, I think the opportunity for interactivity is different too, right? Because with linear cable, if I'm watching on a television that has no interactivity, I could just watch and consume the content and then later on interact with it or later on do something. But in a world where I'm watching over a digital device, my opportunity to actually respond to the ad in real time or close to real time is new. And maybe that's a few years away, but I'm curious how you think of the advertising opportunity as different, given that the audience may be different and given that the level of interactivity may be different. And maybe there are other things that are different too. That's an important question. There's a lot to consider here. So generally speaking, you are correct that, that you've got generally older audiences on cable and you've got younger audiences on streaming. However, that's not always the case and it's much more complicated than that. Let's take the NBA, for example. Where are these games broadcasted? They're on TNT, right? They're on cable. They're, 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 uh, and, and when you think about NBA, that's younger audiences. It also skews diverse African-American audiences. And these are audiences that are very, very important to advertisers. So the dollars will keep flowing there. That's cable. That goes back to the trend that I was talking about sports in general. However, with streaming, you can now target the audience on a one-to-one -one basis. You can't do that with broadcast and cable. So that is very, very attractive to advertisers as well. However, you still can't get the broad reach that you can get with cable and broadcast. So you have to weigh all of these things right now. And so now you have to look at everything holistically in a completely deduplicated manner. And that's where we come in, right? We help marketers, again, just see it all across whatever channels they're, they're advertising on. There's another thing also to consider, right? The younger audiences are spending a lot more time with short form video, like YouTube. And there becomes a question, well, how much attention are you gonna pay? Like a 30 second ad is very intrusive when you're watching a two minute clip. But when you're watching an NBA game that lasts, multiple hours, like the advertising is not intrusive, especially when you've got some timeouts and breaks and whatever else is, is, is going on with the game. So it, it, it's become an interesting world where the strategy today for marketers is not to like abandon any one thing, but it's really to achieve the right balance and understand the impact and effectiveness. It, it, the world of advertising is way more complicated today than it was 10 years ago when you were just have cable 
and, and, and broadcast. Today, it is, it is very, 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 very complicated. But, but, but th- this question like that you just raised, like you, this is like our company in a nutshell. We obsess over these things. We obsess that, again, how do you deliver the right message to the right audience in the right medium? And there's a lot of mediums uh, happening here and then deliver the right outcome. I can remember growing up when people would have one team that they would watch, but that's just completely changed. Yeah, because there's so many channels to watch, so many teams you can have access to. You know, cable I don't think is going away anytime soon, given the dominance that they still have across sports and, and a lot of other types of programming, but sports in particular. So, another area that is definitely new for iSpot over the last four or five years is this area of helping advertisers and networks and agencies plan their advertising up front. So iSpot got started really helping brands and advertisers figure out how to measure the effectiveness of their ads after the ads ran. You've also started to take that data that that you've built over nine or 10 years and start to help advertisers figure out how to use that data and that audience information to figure out what ads they should be buying in the first place to get better efficiency, better return, better economics. And part of that has led to maybe more of a frenemy relationship with Nielsen, where I think Nielsen will be around for a long time, but you all have, I think, been very thoughtful about how you've entered this newer space of planning. And I'm just curious how you think about that, because as a as a startup CEO, now, now, now iSpot's not a startup, but you had to be very thoughtful about how how to enter that newer space, how to think about who the other companies were in that market, Nielsen being one of them. And I think you've navigated it really well and leveraged streaming, but I'm curious how you've thought about entering this new market of kind of using your your product to help people plan for the ads they want to purchase up front. One of the things that iSpot has brought in the marketplace because all of our data is delivered in real time is we brought a lot of optimization capabilities where a lot of our clients before iSpot came along, you would just get a report like a quarter or two after the fact on how your TV campaign did. iSpot brought real-time data to the table for the first time, which means now you could optimize your media in real time. So we actually started moving upstream, if you will, quite a bit ago from measurement to optimization and now into planning because now it's really, really important to make optimizations and decisions even before you buy. And that's going to become bigger and bigger as the shift moves to streaming and programmatic buying of advertising on television. In fact, part of the deal that we just announced with Roku includes optimization before the buy, where you can become very, very predictive and really plan on on that data to deliver better outcomes before uh, you even make the buy. We have a relationship with the trade desk, uh, where the trade desk uses our data, not only it started with measurement, but now they use it for planning before the buy. So we see this notion of planning. It's also known as pre-bid in the programmatic digital world becoming more and more and more important as we continue to move our capabilities upstream. We're also now on the creative side doing a lot of predictive analytics where we can predict with our measurement how well a creative will do before it even goes out uh, into the market. So so yes, there, there's this, this movement of really going from measurement to optimization to planning, and we're really in the midst of that move. That becomes a lot more important actually in the streaming world where it, it's really in the traditional linear world, you would use Once a year, you would look at the data and you would create your plan and you would make upfront commitments. And that's where Nielsen has really been strong is their data has been used really in the upfronts and TV and creating plans that you don't sort of don't move. You set them, sort of set and forget. In this new world we've been moving into, it's much more real time. It's much more optimization and and it's much more driven before the buy is, is, is even made. And don't you think that gets pushed a little bit by advertisers' experience with what I think of just internet advertising? You know, with with Google and Facebook and TikTok and other platforms that have been around now for a couple of decades, 
you know, you could make a change on your ad buy within minutes. You know, you could know that this search word is or is not working within minutes, or this banner ad is or is not working within minutes. And then you could automatically have the system just self-tune and start purchasing more of the ads that work, less of the ones that don't. You'd close the loop and figure out if consumers are taking action. My sense is that advertisers feel like, hey, I want that level of accountability that I get on search. I want that eventually for video advertising because it's a lot of money that I'm spending here and I want it to work. Do you feel like that influence happens or am I overstating it? Oh, a hundred percent. You've described exactly why streaming is grow, growing faster than any other advertising medium today. And in fact, even more dollars will go into streaming uh, in, in the future. And the reason is, first, you have the video experience on the big screen. Like there's no better, more effective medium than still that traditional 30 second spot on a big screen. And now combine that with the ability to target it in digital and then measure it just like you do in, in, in digital. That is no question one of the, the major driving forces behind why streaming is growing. And it's our measurement that's helping prove the effectiveness of that medium and really closing the loop, also deduping it with traditional linear understanding how much incremental audiences you are getting as you're shifting to streaming. But by the way, these are some of the technologies that we've also brought to traditional linear. It's just that in traditional linear, you can't target it as, as precisely as you can in streaming. But think about streaming as sort of this holy grail of having the most effective and compelling medium in video on a big screen, plus the targeting and the ability to do the close loop of, of, of digital. And I mean, quite honestly, th there's more demand right now for streaming than supply. And that's why the CPMs on streaming are so high right now. It's just there isn't enough supply. But as the industry shifts more to advertising sponsored streaming, the supply will start catching up with the demand. But th this is why it's so exciting. It's such an exciting world right now in streaming for, uh, for advertisers. So Sean, I think you all have done a really masterful job of navigating your path for creating value, you know, in the advertising measurement planning space. And you've also done that in a way where you've managed not to kick sand in the face of the big gorilla in the market, which is Nielsen. And partly that's because you have a different business model and a different product set. And now with streaming, maybe a different opportunity but it would be interesting just to hear your thoughts on how you've chosen to navigate the sequencing of your entry into different parts of the market, because I think you've done it really smartly in a way that's that's been strategic and hasn't drawn a deep competitor to come after you in a way that I think is smart. We built our business by focusing on advertisers and marketers. And for those who don't know, Nielsen, Nielsen is the largest uh, measurement company in the US, but Nielsen's revenue is almost entirely generated by the TV networks or the publishers. So, so the TV networks pay Nielsen to be the arbitrator or what's known as the currency in our space where they measure the programs and thereby the ads. And that gets used as the data that sets the fees for the ads as they're traded between the buyers and the sellers, primarily between aid, ad agencies and TV networks. So that's Nielsen's entire focus. What we noticed coming into the space is the advertisers' interests were not really represented. And so we set out to build software measurement and software solutions that are specifically meant to help advertisers uh, assess the effectiveness of their advertising. And it turned out that that section of the market, which by the way, funds the entire ecosystem, it's the most important part of the ecosystem, was actually not being served directly. Their needs were not being served. And that's the reason that iSpot exists and why we grew so quickly. So today we have very powerful software across creative audience and outcome that serves that sector of the market. Now, the other thing that's happening is as the marketplace shifts to streaming, there is now, a big, big opportunity to really be the arbitrator, if you will, across the streaming landscape. And that's a big area where iSpot is investing in. 
And how things worked in traditional linear are not going to be how things work in streaming. So for example, in traditional linear, you measure the audience for the program, and it's always the same ads that travel with the same programs. So by measuring the programs, you can basically create a currency for the ads. That doesn't work in streaming. In streaming, the ads are targeted one-to-one. -one. So what's happening in streaming, whereas in linear, 90% of the money that was being spent there was on arbitration or, or on the currency, and only 10% was being spent on optimization, planning, verification, and the outcome. You're gonna see that change in streaming. And streaming, it might be the opposite of that. It might be 90% of the value is gonna sit in, the, in all of these things that help optimize, place, verify, measure the outcome. That's how we see the measurement landscaping shifting as we get into a streaming uh, into a streaming led world. So another area that has become a big area of focus for you all is agencies and networks. So, you know, when iSpot got started, I think mainly you were selling primarily to the advertisers themselves, but two other important constituencies are the agencies that those advertisers work with, number one, and number two, the networks who, and I think the networks are, especially the streaming networks are increasingly using iSpot as a way to prove to their advertising customers that their ads are effective. And so I'm just curious how you've gone after agencies and networks as part of your ecosystem and allies over the last several years, because that feels like an important new initiative that you're driving aggressively. Yeah, our, our core business is selling software, enterprise software solutions to brands and advertisers. We especially do well with the larger uh, larger advertisers. So that continues to be uh, account for the bulk of our revenue. I'd say probably like 70% of our revenue is that. But we also have a very massive and, and a fast growing business with TV networks and publishers. We work with every TV network, with every publisher to help them measure their audiences and then prove to advertisers the effectiveness and the outcome of their advertising on, 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 on their platform. So that is a quickly growing uh, business for us, especially on, uh, on, on the emerging streaming side. And then we also, uh, we, we have for a long time worked with advertisers because they are an extension of the brand, but now we're getting a lot deeper with agencies and we are providing solutions that are specific to agencies and we're providing business models, specifically in the ability to buy on a CPM basis from us, measurement services on a CPM basis. So we really see this as an ecosystem uh, play. So really the fastest growing piece of our business is the emer what we call the emerging business, which is a lot of capabilities in streaming. And those capabilities are being adopted by advertisers, by publishers, and by agencies at a fairly rapid pace. Hey, one topic that th this is one where I think I probably have to eat some crow because I, I, I'm historically, as Sean knows, pretty cynical about acquisitions. I just have not seen that many technology acquisitions work that well. And I've been a pretty outspoken person, at least on a few board calls, where I've, I've poo-pooed the idea of acquiring companies. And I've been wrong in the case of iSpot TV, in at least two cases that I can think of. You know, Sean, you guys successfully acquired Asymmetrics. Uh, you also acquired 605. There are probably a couple of others that are, might maybe are a little smaller, but you all have done a really good job, I think, in those particular cases of making those acquisitions work, of really making them add, you know, what, where one plus one equals more than two. One, it'd be great for you to explain those two companies, why you acquired them, how they fit into your strategy, and two, what you've done to successfully integrate them into iSpot? Because I think a lot of founders struggle with this same question. They, they feel like it's a good idea to potentially acquire other companies, but getting the acquisitions right and then executing well on them afterwards is, is a lot easier said than done. And, and you guys have done it well. Buying companies is a lot easier than integrating <laughs> the companies and making, making the acquisition successful. So I, I think it, it starts with very, very careful vetting and thinking about an acquisition. So for me, it always starts, look, our, our core mission is to help advertisers measure 
the effectiveness of their marketing, specifically in video. Again, like I said earlier, it's very, very, very simple. So the first question really, really becomes, does this help advertisers um, measure the effectiveness of their investments? Is it synergistic with what we do? Is the business model synergistic? Is this something that is the culture of the company synergistic? Is this something that we believe we can take to our clients and our clients will buy the service and find the service value? So it starts with that. In the case of Ace Metrics, that checked all the boxes there. They were already working with a lot of brands, a lot of our own customers, our own customers raved about the capability. They had a great product. Again, it was an, it was creative. It was in the area of measuring creative, which we didn't have at the time. And we had, you know, the audience and outcome piece. And uh, we said, wow, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be powerful if we can go to marketers and bring them the full end-to-end solution of what they really care about, the creative, the audience, and the outcome. And we really, really believed that we could do that in the case in, in the case of Ace. And so long story short, Ace Metrics has been a, a runaway success for us. We've n- nearly tripled the revenue of the company since you know the two and a half years or so that we've acquired them. More recently, we acquired uh, 605. What we really liked about 605, they had a very, very talented team that we thought could be very additive to us. They were very, very good at outcome measurement, but in the KPIs that iSpot didn't measure. iSpot was good at measuring outcomes to website and digital. They were very good at measuring outcomes to sales, offline sales, CPG sales, auto sales, to foot traffic, to credit card transaction data. So it really was very, very accretive, uh, synergistic, and it's very, very important for what marketers want and in terms of measuring marketing effectiveness. Not to mention that they also had the charter data. We now have Charter, LG, Vizio, and Roku. So we have over 100 million devices that we can measure off. So now 605 is a more of a recent acquisition. So I think the jury's still out on our execution and, and, and integration. Again, it's much easier to buy the company than it is to integrate it. So if most of the effort is going to the actual acquisition and not enough to the integration part, that's a problem. Yeah, well, you guys have done a great job and uh, there's a lot of good lessons in there for other founders. M- maybe one last category of questions is just around innovation in general. I mean, we've known each other a long time and one of the things that I've been the most impressed with by your team and you in particular is you guys kind of out innovate yourselves. You know, like I don't think I've been in a board meeting where I've heard you say, well, company X is building this and we need to build this too because that's our competitor. And so we're going to build it or, or customers are asking for this. I mean, to me, it's a challenge for a CEO to listen to customers, but not look in the customer rear view mirror as it relates to what to build next, because you sort of have to have the vision for where markets, platforms, ecosystems, consumers are going. So how do you at a process level ideate? Because you cooked up a lot of really cool ideas over the last 11 years since I've been involved, and I know there are more in the works. I'm just curious what process you and your team have used to innovate because it's impressive and maybe there are things to be learned for other other founders. I do think it does start with customers. Not as much prospects, right? Because prospects will tell you all sorts of things. That, you know, I would buy it if you had X, Y, and Z. So listening to customers is very, very fundamental. But that's actually the easier part, right? Like that's like basic blocking and tackling. That's having an organization that's well-versed in listening to customers and collecting feedback and often meeting and, and, and discussing it. I think the harder part is understanding where, where things are headed, the trend. So, so I think for me, I do a lot of listening, a lot of talking in, to people in the industry about just trends in general. But the problem is you sort of have to become obsessive about it. Like I, I obsessively think about what I hear But then I also have to block out the noise. There is so much noise, especially the media will make a lot of noise. And and a lot of what the media is talking about is just 
media loves like drama and hype and things. And, and so you, you sort of have to also, you have to obsessively think about where it's really, really, really headed. Who do you trust? Who do you listen to and what not to listen to? That is the trick. It's so hard. And at some point, you also have to think about what where your own core competency is at and, and, and not get drawn off into directions where the company doesn't have core competencies in. So yes, this is the, the tricky part. Even when we started iSpot, it was all over the media. TV is dead. TV is dead. Like, so one would say, well, why are you starting a company in TV? TV is dead. And, and so, but you have to obsessively think through that. And it's like, what does it mean TV is dead? Like, are people going to go to their wall and rip off this device off of their wall? Is like, no, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe anyone's going to do that. Who doesn't love a big screen on their wall? I mean, come on. Like, so it's definitely the, 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 the tricky part. But I think that's, I spent a lot of my time doing just that, doing a lot of listening, doing a lot of thinking, doing a lot of obsessing. And it, sometimes it takes courage also to like just ignore noise and things that people are saying where you know it, deep down, like you don't believe it. Here's the problem. There isn't a playbook for this one, right? Like, like th this is what makes, I think, this job harder. It's like you, you just can't pull up a playbook. Like if, if, I, if I was running a sales organization, I, could, I got a playbook. But like making decisions about the future, I, I think is a, is a bit trickier. Okay, one last question, kind of a crystal ball question. So if you and I are here talking in four, four and a half more years, I'm just curious if you had to bet what types of things will you and I be talking about several years from now? One thing that's probably not going to change over time is just the investment in advertising, right? We know advertising works and we know advertising is effective, but advertising can become a lot more effective than it is today, a lot more. And we were talking earlier in this area of planning and moving upstream. A lot of the planning is going to move to be AI driven, both on the, on the creative side and on the media on, and on the media side, where you're going to be able to auto generate storyboards and imagery and creative and have a lot more variation. And then also do the testing for those in a very quick AI driven fashion. And these are a lot of the technologies that iSpot is working on and has available and deploying. And the same on, on, on the media side, you're going to be able to predict before you place an ad, what kind of impact it's going to have. And especially in the streaming world where you can target it one to one. So imagine a creative now, instead of one variation, we now have 20 variations that are by different demographic cuts or interest cuts. And maybe there's now the ability geographically to insert something that's more relevant. So I, th I think there's just going to be a lot more dynamic elements in both the creative and the placement of the media. And there's a lot, th there's a lot of upside there today because advertising today, as effective as it is overall, it's way, way under-optimized. There's a huge, huge opportunity in advertising for personalization, for targeting, for optimization. And it's all going to be driven by technology, by real-time technology, and by machine learning, and by AI. Super exciting. What a pleasure. It's always great, Sean, to get to uh, see your view of the future and remind me of, of the best stories from the past. And uh, it's been a real pleasure for, for Madrona to get to be a partner of yours along this journey. So I'm going to just thank you for taking time, let you get back to the business of, of running a fast growing company. But thank you so much, Sean, for, for spending time with us. Yeah, no, thank you, Len. And, and for the viewers, uh, Len and I to actually talk more often than every three to four years in case uh, somebody might get, get that impression. We, 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 we talk quite often. And thank you, Len. You and Madrona have been awesome partners and continue to be. And it's an exciting time. So thank you.